morning, Ephesians chapter 5. I think one of my favorite subjects is the uh, theme of forgiveness. And I want to talk to you about that this morning. The actual title of the message is The Key to Family Unity. <laughs> uh, really, it's the key to any unity in any relationship. Because uh, I, I can guarantee you, if you have a relationship, eventually one of you is going to wrong the other. <laughs> Probably both. And uh, to continue that relationship, you're going to have to forgive. Ephesians chapter, chapter 5. I was listening to a CD on, in the van on the way to church. And one of the songs is, uh, the words are basically, that the greatest words I ever heard were, I forgive. <laughs> And it's true. You know, there's a lot of great words in the Bible. Those are, those are some great ones. Ephesians chapter 5, uh, starting in verse 17. I'll just read a few verses here. Ephesians 5, 17. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, <laughs> singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. I'll just stop reading there. You know, if you think about it, family is where we live much of our Christianity. I know we go through different stages in life, and sometimes we're on our own and so on, but family has a lot to do with our Christianity. Isn't it interesting how family can push buttons that nobody else can, can push? <laughs> you know, a, a close relative saying something that if somebody else said it, you'd think nothing of it, you know? It's, it's really interesting, and uh, it's something that, you know, you, you grow with, and you've got to deal with in your Christian life. One of the, the things you have to think about with a family is the spirit of your family. Um, you know, there's just a... An, an attitude that, that, that is in a home. And some of the things we read there are, are very crucial for that. Uh, verse 17, it, it's, it's going to really affect a family whether you know God's will or not. And if everybody's just going their own way and, and living for themselves, it's going to be very different than if they're all seeking to understand the will of the Lord. Or uh, if you're filled with the Spirit, that, that's going to that's gonna make... Well, let me put it this way, depending on what spirit you're filled with. He says, don't be filled with the spirit of alcohol. I mean, I see that all the time. That tears up homes, drugs and alcohol. Um, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the spirit. That'll change the spirit of your home. And uh, you, you can go from one to the other. You know, there's people who need to repent of their drunkenness and, and accept Christ and have them change their home. Uh, being thankful, man, that'll make a difference in a home, won't it? Uh, verse 20, giving thanks. You know, if you have a, a spirit of thankfulness in your home, and if you don't, start with you. Start thanking people. You know, just, uh, it, it's amazing what, what a difference it'll make. And, and then verse 21, just submitting to God's will in, in your life. Submitting yourselves one to another in, in the fear of God. Uh, the spirit of your home. You can also think about your family culture. You know, you hear about this every once in a while with a sporting team or with a business. How, you know, people say, how could that happen? You know, some awful things hap thing happens and they say, how could that happen? Well, it was the culture. And, and as a team or as a business, they, they started doing something or not doing something and, and it, then it gets worse and pretty soon they're doing some awful thing they never thought they'd do. Uh, I'm not even going to bring up things. It's just, they're just such wretched things that people end up doing. Uh, you, you know, as a family, you're going to develop a culture by what you allow, by what you don't allow, and what you demonstrate. Uh, dads, it starts with you. Uh, moms, you're the Holy Spirit of, of the family. <laughs> uh, you know, what we allow. There's things that we should not allow in our home. There's things that we, uh, that we, sh we should allow. There's things that, we sh that should be going on. And there's things that we should demonstrate. Listen, I don't care if you grew up in a home where they hugged each other and said, I love you or not. You do it. It doesn't have to be something you learned from your grandparents or your parents. You start doing what's, what's right. 
affect the spirit and culture of your home. Make a difference. But that's, that's not my, my topic this morning. That, that was free. I just threw that in there. Uh, family unity. We're living in a world of struggle, aren't we? Homes are being torn up. Uh, society, uh, you know, it just it seems like every week in the news there's some, something tearing down the morality of, of our world. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of things that, uh, that affect us. Love is so important. You know, that's, a, that's a foundational thing, isn't it? Uh, he talks about it here in Ephesians 5 when he says in verse 25, Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Now, what a verse. What an excellent verse uh, about love. Uh, you know, we need to have a love that, that's like Jesus. It's sacrificial. It, it's sanctifying. Verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. Yeah, a, a real love makes you better. Uh, it, it's, it, it costs you. And it's satisfying. You know, that's the kind of love that, that God wants for us. Like Jesus, like God did when he says he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. A real love will cost you something. And that's foundational. Um, obedience. You know, in Ephesians chapter 6, he says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. You, you know, parents need to obey the Lord. Children need to obey their, their parents. And, and in verse 2, he says, Honor thy father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. You know, there's a blessing there. You know, relationships are, are very important, and they're built on love and obedience. You, you might say those are, are foundational. You, a home can't really function properly without love and, and submission. But I think another real key to family unity is forgiveness. And I hope you can see that this morning as we look at this, for forgiveness. There's a lot of verses in the Proverbs about this. Let me just mention a few. Proverbs 19.11 says, The discretion of a man deferreth his anger, and it is his glory to pass over a transgression. That's a good verse, isn't it? It's a good thing, he says, just to, you know, somebody wrongs you, just kind of, let it ride. Let it go. Uh, Proverbs 15, 1, a soft answer turneth away wrath, but grievous words stir up anger. We've, we've all experienced both of those, haven't we? <laughs> you know, someone says something, and you say it back, and boy, it escalates from there. God says, don't do it. Um, Proverbs 15, 17, uh, he says, better is a dinner of herbs with love than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. <laughs> Now, most of us don't care whether we have a stalled ox. <laughs> but he's just saying it's better to have love and be poor than to have hatred and be rich. You know, a stalled ox, that might be a Ferrari in the garage nowadays. I don't know. Um, there's another, Proverbs 20, verse 3. It is an honor to turn from strife, but every fool will be meddling. It's an honor to, when you're wrong, to just... Move away from it. You know, we live in a world where we make heroes of those who seek revenge. There's a lot of modern illustrations of that, movies and shows and so on, where you know, the main theme is, man, we're going we're gonna to get even. Uh, there was an old book called The Count of Monte Cristo. I don't know if you've ever read it or seen it. Uh, the, the whole theme of it is he's wronged, and man, he, he, he spends years seeking revenge. What's the, we have some great sayings about revenge, you know. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Oh, we like that, don't we? But, you know, it's not. It's not a good dish at all because it, it imprisons us. You know, the problem with not forgiving is it imprisons you in the past. Now, I've said this to you before. I, I've talked to people who had a wrong done to them sometimes 40, 50 years ago. And they can trot out every word and every nuance and everything about that wrong and, and lay it out before you. It's like, you know, a family heirloom that they pull out of how they were, how they were so wronged. Listen, don't be imprisoned by those that wrong you. It, it doesn't affect them. It makes you bitter. And the... The most terrible thing about not forgiving is you become like the one you won't forgive. I've seen that over and over. And the amazing thing is people can't see it. They'll do the same thing as the person who wronged them. Maybe they do it in a different way. 
but it, it, it makes you just like the person who wronged you. Man, it's, that's not what I want. <laughs> you know, if somebody's mean to me, that's not my uh, model for living. You know, in the home, in the workplace, in the school, uh, every relationship we have, uh, not forgiving always has a bad consequence. But you know, forgiveness gives you the freedom from the past and has no bitterness for the present. And it leaves you free to be like Christ. And really, that's our goal, isn't it? To be like Jesus. Uh, one of the verses tonight, uh, Paul talks about, I beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 10, one. We're gonna, we've been looking at that. You know, that's what we want to be, is meek and gentle, like Christ, loving and kind. Why forgive? Well, let me give you a few reasons this morning. Number one that I would present is forgiveness is the most godlike act a person can do. You stop and think about it. You know, Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now, of all the people who could have struck back, it was Jesus. It's like the song, he could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. Didn't do that. Uh, some of the Psalms, uh, for instance, Psalm 86, verse 5. I, I had printed out this verse. I think it was this one. Maybe it's Psalms 86, 15. They're very similar. For the uh, Mother's Day. And we decided not to use it. So I have it sitting on my desk. <laughs> Just a little, little card of this verse. Psalm 86, 5 says, For thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. What a blessing. You know, that's the heart of God. And when we forgive, we can be like that. We can be like the Lord. There's many verses in the, in the Psalms about forgiveness. Psalm 32 and, and Psalm 51 are, are complete chapters. Psalm 32, 1, Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Psalm 103 and uh, verse 12. I'll just give you quickly a, a few here. Psalm 103, verse 12. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. That's actually verse 13. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so hath he removed our transgressions from us. God takes them upon himself. He takes them away from us. Uh, in Matthew chapter 5 and verse 44, when Jesus was commenting about, about this, here's what he said, Matthew 5 verse 44, I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Man, he's covered about every angle there, hasn't he? Why? that ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. It's real easy to be like the devil. <laughs> and the world, the world glorifies him. It's hard to be like the Heavenly Father. But forgiving is, is one act that we can do that is most godlike. And what a blessing it is. I think every Christian should know Ephesians 4, verse 32, where he says, Be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. See, that's our motive. We've been forgiven. We can forgive others. We've experienced it. We know what it's like to do wrong. But I just find this, this subject such a blessing. You know, we're, we're never worthy of God's love. And yet He loves us. He forgives us. He's tender towards us. He has compassion and, and, and grace. Uh, Holding in your hostility, not forgiving, will ruin any relationship. Let me encourage you. Uh, forgive. It's the most godlike act a person can do. Secondly, Jesus compared anger to murder. We need to be careful of our hearts because we can deceive ourselves. You know, the Bible says that the heart is deceitful above all things and, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Uh, we forget that uh, these, these things left in our heart... Uh, can lead to things we, we never imagined. Jesus said in, in Matthew 5, verse 21, 
what he does in, in this passage is he basically lays out law versus grace. You know, God has a certain standard in the law, but he has a higher standard with grace. And he, he says first, ye have heard that it was said by them of old. This is the law. Thou shalt not kill. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you, here's, here's grace's standard. Whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother, Raka, that's, that's thou fool or empty, uh, be in, shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hellfire. God says we need to, to forgive. Uh, we need to get relationships right. Uh, 1 John chapter 3, verse 15 says it very clearly when he says, Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. That's very stark, isn't it? Uh, we need to forgive. We need to not hate. Now, you might say, oh, I don't hate him. I've heard people say that. But do you forgive him? Uh, confess it as sin and, and forsake it. God, God knows what our hearts are like, and he knows it can go further than we ever imagined. Do you think Jonah ever imagined where he'd end up? <laughs> uh, I'm just not going to go God's way. Man, he, he, sin takes you a lot further than you ever thought you'd go. Number three, whoever offends you has offended God more. God is holy, and he still blesses them. <laughs> you ever think about it that way? You know, mankind does so much wrong to God. Um, and yet God blesses us. Like he said, where we read in Matthew, bless them that curse you. In, um, in 2 Peter, he talks about how God is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. We're so sinful, and this holy God still blesses us and offers us forgiveness and, and uh, grace and mercy. In James 1 and verse 17, it says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Now, that's not us. We, we have variableness and turnings, but not God. God is always good. God is always gracious. And, uh, you know, when, when someone offends you, they've offended God. He's still willing to bless them. <laughs> uh, the other side of that is, whatever offenses are done to you, You've offended God more. Now, I've realized over the years, this is one point that I find a lot of people don't agree with me on. <laughs> and uh, it's hard, but you need to realize, I don't care what offense, and there's some awful things that people can do to each other. We've offended God more. And one of the reasons is God is holy. God deserves not to be offended in this way. And yet we offend him and offend him and offend him. And, you know, think of all the sins against you. You compound that by all the people in the world and all the people that have ever been. All of those sins are against God. The reason it's sin is because there's a God. We need to understand, uh, our sin offends God. Uh, what is it, Psalm 711, that it says God is angry with sin every day. He never has a day when he can say, oh, I won't worry about sin today. Because we're constantly sinning. Whatever offenses you've done, uh, you've offended God more. Uh, we had read there in, in Matthew chapter 5, and when I say you, I, say, I mean us. Uh, Matthew 5 and, and verse 21, when he said, uh, whoever is angry with his brother uh, without a cause. No, I've got the wrong chapter. It's chapter 18. <laughs> That's the one I just read. Matthew chapter 18 and, and verse 21. Peter, this is when Peter came to the Lord and said, Lord, how often uh, shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? And most commentators, when Peter says seven times, they think, you know, he's, he probably thinks he's being really liberal there. You know? I, won't, I won't hit him the first time. I won't hit him the second time. <clears throat> I won't hit him the third time. Uh, I'll give him seven times. And the Lord answers till 70 times seven. Now, I think, and I think I'm right on this, he's not saying keep track and at the 491st time, let him have it. <laughs> he's saying just forgive. And then he gives this account. Now, I want to read the whole thing to you. It's, it's Matthew 18. You can turn there if you'd like. Uh, verse 23. 
Matthew 18, verse 23. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him ten thousand talents. But forasmuch as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold, and his wife and his children, and all that he had in payment to be made. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him, saying, Lord, have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion, and loosed him, and forgave him the debt. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, which owed him an hundred pence. Now, I've heard it compared. You might have noticed he said that the man owed 10,000 talents. You could say that's like a million dollars. This other guy owes like $10. 100 pence. I mean, it's practically nothing. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat and said, saying, Pay me that thou owest. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, These words will sound familiar. Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. So when his fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry and came and told unto their Lord all that was done. And his Lord, after that he had called him, said unto him, O thou wicked servant, I forgave thee all that debt, because thou desirest me. Shouldst not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow servant, even as I had pity on thee. Man, what a pointed story. That's exactly what we experience. We wrong God. We wrong Him every day. We deserve hell. And, and someone looks at us crosswise and says, oh boy, you know. You diss me, you know. We're, we're, so, we're so without compassion many times, even though we've experienced forgiveness ourselves. We need to forgive because, listen, we've offended more. And you know, the, one of the other problems that springs up is when we don't forgive, it causes problems with our fellowship with others. Did you notice that the other servants noticed what this man had done? And they, you know, they, they saw what was done and were very sorry. And when we don't forgive, when we have a spirit of, of bitterness, others respond to that. And uh, sometimes they separate themselves from us. You know, they don't, you know, the Bible says, I can't remember the first words, but basically don't go with an angry man lest you learn his ways. You know, God doesn't want us to, to be around that kind of thing. But the, the other problem is that it, it spreads. You know, bitterness can spread. You've probably experienced it where you share your bitter story and, oh boy, they got a bitter story and they got a bitter story. And, man, you can have a real wonderful time around, uh, you know, all your bitterness. And the Bible says in Hebrews 12, 15, looking diligently, it says, being careful, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. Listen, bitterness will not only affect you, it'll affect your children. It can affect your grandchildren. Uh, there are wars that go on because of bitterness here and bitterness there and, and they won't resolve it. Not forgiving causes loss of fellowship as others respond to our, our bitter spirit. And, and really, not forgiving will, will cause you to miss the benefits that God has for your life. And God wants to bless us. God wants us to, uh, to have the, the blessings that, that only He can give. And you know, if we won't forgive... Uh, God warns us, for instance, Ephesians 6 and, and verse 8, knowing that what, whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. He's just saying, yeah, God wants to bless you. If you'll do what God says, He, yeah, he, he wants to, to help you and bless you. But you know, the other side of the coin is, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And uh, he, he labels that when he says, he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Now, we need to be careful that we reflect God in our relationships with people. But we need to be willing and, and forgive. I, I guess probably the main reason is God just says, forgive. <laughs> you know, in, in looking at all of these things, God says, be tenderhearted, forgiving one another. 
And you know that the example we have is God himself. And what a blessing it is to see how God deals with us. Uh, Psalm chapter 78 and verse 37, he talks about his relationship to Israel. If, if you've read the Old Testament, you know, Israel just, you know, God blesses them and they sin against him. They rebel. They come back, God blesses them, they sin. You know, just over and over. Well, Psalm 78, uh, verse 37, he says, For their heart was not right with him. It's talking about Israel. Neither were they steadfast in his covenant. But he, being full of compassion, forgave their iniquity and destroyed them not. Yea, many a time turned he his anger away and did not stir up his wrath. For he remembered that they were but flesh, a wind that passeth away and cometh not again. See, when you, when you think about forgiveness, think about God. God is full of compassion. And, and really the, the bottom line is this. He wants to forgive. God is not a God of vengeance. God wants to forgive. He is a God of justice. Psalm 86, verse 5 that we, we read earlier. Thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. It's like the master that Jesus talked about in Matthew 18. The exact words were, he said he forgave, because thou desirest me. Do you know, you know what that means in modern vernacular? Just because you asked. Man, how simple is that? If we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's what God's like. Our God is a God of compassion. God wants to forgive. Ready to forgive, he says in Psalm 86, all them that, that call upon thee. As we see the example of God, we see that he forgives with compassion. We see as well, Psalm 103, verse 3, he forgives completely. You know, I've heard people say, oh, I might forgive, but I'll never forget. Yeah, don't, don't do it again. Uh, Psalm 103, and you know, having said that, I don't know how your life is, but I find that I'm often confessing the same sin. You, you know, it's not I just did it once in my whole life. You know, it, it comes up again. There, there's besetting sins, things that we're more prone to. And they're different for different ones of us. Psalm 103, verse 3, Who forgiveth all thine iniquity. It's gone. That's why when we pray, we really don't have to say, Lord, forgive me. The Bible says to confess our sin. It's just to agree with God. God's already forgiven us if you're saved. Uh, he says in Colossians 2.13, Having forgiven you all trespasses. We used to sing a song with the kids. Gone, 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 gone. Yes, my sins are gone. Buried in the deepest sea. and You know, all, all of that. And it's true. Uh, Isaiah 43 says, I will not remember thy sins. God forgives us because he's full of compassion. God forgives us completely. In Luke 7, he uses a word that I wanted to, to share. Luke 7 and verse 41. It's another similar illustration, condensed version of the one we read in Matthew 18. Luke 7, 41. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed 500 pence and the other 50. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me, therefore, which of them will love him most? Now, that word, frankly... It contains in the Greek the word charisma or grace. What he's talking about is he freely forgave them. God forgives us freely. And what that means is he pays the price. And that's part of forgiveness. That's one of the prices we don't like to pay. You know, when someone wrongs us, to forgive them is sacrificial. <laughs> it's going to cost you uh, to be like God. Romans 8.32 said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Listen, if God would give you his son, what's he going to withhold that's worth having? God freely forgives us. He pays the, the price. 1 Peter 3.18 The Bible says, Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. In Ephesians 1 and verse 7, he says, to, In whom we have redemption through his blood, 
the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. God forgives us freely because He pays the price. Uh, let, let me encourage you. Uh, you need to see how God forgives. As you study the Scriptures, learn, the more you learn about God, the more you'll like Him. <laughs> the more you'll love Him. And the more you'll be able to try and be like Him. Uh, seeing your own need of forgiveness should cause you to be willing to forgive others also. I have to say this, though. I, I am regularly amazed at people who are forgiven not being willing to forgive others. I'm not sure why that is. I'll use an example. You pardon me, if the, if, but uh, it's kind of like an ex-smoker. You know, ex-smokers are death on people smoking. You know? And uh, sometimes I think we forget. Uh, you know, we say, oh, I'm an ex-sinner. <laughs> And, you know, we're death on other people's sin. We need to have the, the heart of the Lord. We need to have mercy and grace uh, towards people. It's not that we excuse sin or uh, encourage them to sin, uh, but we, we should have a, a sense of what it was like. And, uh, you know, it, it's not our strengths that bind us together. It's our weaknesses. And forgiveness binds us together in humility before God. Yeah, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. If you apply it to the family, it's the key to family unity. You've seen families torn apart. It, it, where if, if one or two would just say, listen, I, I'm sorry. I forgive. Uh, and things could be so much better. It, it starts by receiving God's forgiveness. God offers forgiveness freely, completely, permanently, because he loves us. And he showed that love. And then, as you receive God's forgiveness, let him give you the fruit of his spirit. And change your spirit and the spirit of your family. You know, like, like we read in Psalms, Thou, Lord, art good and ready to forgive, plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon thee. You can count on God's mercy and forgiveness. Isn't that a blessing? Uh, there's, a, there's a verse. Let me think where it is. I can't think exactly where it is, but he, he talks about how God's forgiveness has to do with fearing him. And, uh, you know, if you think about that, I think, I think this, the reason it's not in my notes here is I think it's something I'm talking about tonight. But um, if God wouldn't forgive you, it would be pointless to fear him. What good would it do? He's going to destroy you anyway. But because God will forgive, it makes sense to fear Him. We need His forgiveness. Now, uh, you know, as Christians, hopefully you've, you've come to that place where you've seen, yeah, I'm a sinner before God. Uh, you've seen the despair that sin brings, and, and you've confessed and repented of your sin and by faith turned to, to Jesus Christ. You've received His forgiveness. Well, as you've received, so... So give. You know, point people to that forgiveness that, that you've received. Uh, why not give it to those who wrong you? Forgiveness. Uh, it'll help you. It'll change your life. It'll give you eternal life when you receive it from the Lord. Uh, we're going to sing a, a little different song to end with this morning. It's at Calvary. Mercy there was great and grace was free. Uh, maybe there is an, a situation in your life that you need to make right. Not necessarily that you need, you need to come, but you, you can. Come and pray about it. Maybe you need to trust Christ as your Savior. Maybe you're not sure if, if you died, whether you'd go to heaven or, or what would happen. And we can show you from the Bible how to, how to know. The Bible says, God says, these are written that you may know that you have eternal life. Uh, and it's by faith in what, what Christ has done. Uh, let's stand together. Azrael, come and lead.